My name is Bill Cox. I was a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Force Team, the FBI. I was in a courthouse uh, testifying in court, and I was in the uh, break room for the court deputies, and they came across the television that they had the first plane hit. So we're watching the footage on it while I was waiting for court, and we saw the second plane hit. And when we saw the second plane hit, I said, that's an attack. And it was a short time later uh, that I got a phone call to go to a local airport and shut it down, get all the planes on the ground, clear the tarmac. And then we, uh, once we got the planes down, then we cleared the tarmac of all personnel. Couldn't have any maintenance personnel, anybody out near any aircraft and uh, clear the airport. I've always been lucky enough in high stress situations, I always seem to get calmer. Um, so I was handling the chaos fine. It was just a matter of organizing, putting the people in place that you need to put in place and start clearing the airspace and the runways. Well, I was called that night and said that we will be reporting to team up and to create the uh, uh, terrorism task force and that I'd be an investigator on that task force. The next morning, we joined up with them, went to New York and um, met with Robert Mueller and he formed our teams and uh, our team flew back here to Florida and started the back trace on the investigation. We investigated from the, the point of the attack uh, we backtraced each flight, uh, found out all the terrorists that were involved. We took each flight, um, and then we found at Logan Airport in Boston that Muhammad Atta uh, didn't get all his bags onto the airplane. Um, there wasn't room, so one of the bags was left behind. And in that bag, uh, we discovered uh, their plan for the attack, different um, planning stages, financing, uh, it was all laid out in that suitcase. We backtraced from that and started our investigation, which took years, obviously. We were working 80 to 100 hours a week. I'd come home about once every three months to see my family just for a weekend, and then we're back out doing the investigation. Um, and you see it throughout. Even the firefighters and first responders that were digging at the site, they're still suffering to this day with diseases that were picked up from all the toxic material from the, you know, the attack. The, to the service members that have fought and died and been wounded and it, it's amazing to have seen all that and met these people and see how strong the country came out in support. Um, you saw everyone from Congress, everybody on the same steps agreeing, which you don't see these days. But, uh, you know, in our history, it's always taken a tragedy to bring everybody together, which is sad in a way. When I felt stressed, overwhelmed, from the amount of work we're doing and the amount of leads that were coming in and everything. I had a picture on my desk um, of the fence line along 9-11, the d attack site. I had all the pictures of the victims, all their messages. And whenever I felt overwhelmed, I would pick that picture up and ingrain those faces in my mind and the sacrifices those families had to make. And I think about all the other sacrifices that were being made at that time from first responders to the military, to everyone involved. And I think about the 3,000, almost 3,000 that were killed that day. And knowing also that there was almost 3,000 children that had a parent that was lost. So when I looked at that picture, I saw the faces and I didn't forget. 
and it gave me the energy and the stamina to keep going through it all. Seeing America as heroes going out, stepping up to the plate and doing everything that was needed. And it wasn't just the military or first responders, it was the general public. We couldn't have got as far as we did without tips coming in. And the old saying stands true. You see something, say something. And they did, they reached out. And that's how we got a lot of our leads to follow. And another big one that stood out for me was uh, the capture of uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. He was the architect of the 9-11 attack. And uh, when he was captured through all the investigation with everybody involved, FBI, CIA, military, uh, when he was captured and taken to Guantanamo Bay, um, that was a big satisfaction in my mind for me. We did our investigation and we tracked down everyone that was involved. We have made, have not caught everybody personally. I may be just a small cog in the wheel, but everybody went out and tracked down everyone that was involved. The financiers, the people involved, the trainers in the training camps for the terrorists, everything. We had a, a list and we tracked them down. It was the largest attack in the world like that. Largest terrorist attack in the world. The largest attack we've ever had on our homeland. And to not have it happen again, because there are foreigners out there that are looking to do the same thing every single day. And it's those sheepdogs that are out there that keep us protected that work hard every single day, whether it be domestic terrorists, whether it be foreign terrorists, they're out to stop it. Enjoy the concert, have a good time, but remember those heroes, and remember, kind of like that country song by Toby Keith, you rattle the cage, the big dog will come out, and it won't let it happen again. That's all. This is Bill Cox, and this is my story.